Hello and welcome to your weekly roundup of all of the latest news and ramble about the world of electric cars from the team at electrifying.com. So this week we are discussing car collaboration, otherwise known as safety in numbers. Indeed. French cars, again. Yeah, worth talking about. Yeah, and a place that is very close to our hearts. Leaf Street. Particularly close to your heart. Yeah. Um, plus, we'll be answering all your electric car conundrums and dipping into the post bag to find out your views on everything electric. Welcome to the Kilowatt Half Hour. Okay. I'm Ginny. I'm Nicola. I'm Tom. Should we, should we kick off with like, what, what have we all been driving? What have you been driving? Oh, well, so today... I drove the Fiat 500e for the first time in a long time. I haven't driven that for a long time. Yeah, go on. it's outside. Don't I'm go gonna, I am. When we finish this podcast, I'm going to reacquaint myself because you said you thought it was a little firm. Yeah, I mean, it's always one of those where I thought it was a really lovely car to drive. And then all of a sudden I sat in it today and I was like, oh, 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 bit, bit bumpy, bit firm. Bit firm. Also, you know, you think, how long has that been out now? Three and a half years, that car? Yeah. Three years, probably three and a half. It's got to be. Things have moved on, haven't they? Yeah. Um, have, have, have you seen what they're going? Have you seen what they're going to do to that 500e? Apparently, rumours say no. They're going to put a petrol engine in it. <laughs> Honestly, they're going to put a pe- no. They're going to really retrofit a petrol engine into the 500e. That's got to be a first. I mean, I know loads of. Um, petrol cars that have had electric powertrains like forced into them but i don't know of it happening the other way if why you... why i don't know i suppose that it, in some They've markets got the Fiat 500. why why do that that must be getting on a bit though that that must that must be being killed off soon so yeah i'm not a fan of that car so that all. car's going the yeah. much much nicer designed one is is getting oh okay right well fair enough maybe Good that'll look. be a mm. sign of new things to come like i redrove the the uh id buzz last week maybe they'll randomly put an engine in that as well put a diesel in it <laughs> <laughs> let's hope they don't do that um tom what have you been driving this week well, the most exciting thing i've driven this week is a 2016 nissan leaf that hadn't moved for 11 months which is the, the <laughs> latest. <laughs> okay. It's rock and roll, Tom. Bar- barn find? Kind of no, a this barn is, find? This is a, what, what regular viewers will know about Leaf Street, which is obviously what we what were saying earlier, is very close to your heart, Nicola. So if you haven't seen it, there's a video on our YouTube channel, which is of uh, my village, basically, because there are leafs everywhere, because word of mouth spreads and, and people say, oh, that will work for me, and they buy a leaf. So there was one particular part of my village where there was a a street, and you might remember, Nicola, at the bottom of a road, and there were three neighbours who had leaves all in a row, and then there was a gap of one house, and then there was another leaf. Um, Well, now that house has a leaf. (laughs) So it's like a complete thing. (laughs) Um, yeah, and it's a strange story. I mean, it's a sad story, really, because the guy's father died and he had a leaf and it hadn't moved for 11 months and he was looking at it, looking at disposing of it and thought, well, it's not worth that much, really. And he, he knew that he'd looked after it, but it just hadn't moved for 11 months because he'd been ill. So he said to me, what do I need to do? I said, I don't know, I'll come and have a look. So the battery, the 12 volt battery was flat. So we had to open the door using a special key, which I know is inside the remote. Opened it up, popped the bonnet, put a, a charge pack on it, and everything lit up. And I'm like, well, it's got 18 miles range, which is enough to get us back to his place. So uh, put it in uh, put it in reverse. And it kind of, you know, when the brakes are all rusty, it's like, <laughs> but it moved, pumped up the tires, drove it back, absolutely flawless. And uh, no! he's now, yeah, so he's now uh, plugged it in. That, honestly, that little street, like right? Tom was telling me about it before we filmed the video. And I was like, that's going to be really weird. And the moment we drove into that street, you see them. Leaf, leaf, leaf. <laughs> so now you're going to drive into that street and go leaf, 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 leaf. Do, yeah. Can I ask you, Tom, when a new leaf joins the neighbourhood, do you all get together on Sundays and have like a little leaf convention? I hope Clean so. your cars together, <laughs> have some cake to celebrate. No? Maybe no, we should. Yes. Yeah. Maybe we should. No, I think some people are more into cleaning their cars than others. So those, you know, you know uh, whose it is by the cleanliness. <laughs> look, look no, there's one guy... There's one guy called Andy who's worse than me. (laughs) I love that. What did you say? You are Captain Clean. That's what you are. Captain Clean, yeah. 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 I do like cleaning my car. I've I've been running um, 
my, my BMW i5 for a while. Um, and I am absolutely dying for Tom to to borrow it for a few weeks because oh. I know it will come back pristine. Yeah. Are you, are, Maybe are that's you in what it tomorrow? I'm going to bring it tomorrow. I am. So are I'm you? Do well, I'll, I'll do a swap and I'll clean it for you. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. It's it clean. Captain clean. It's what he does. Um, so, so what have I? I've been driving my um, the i5, which mm. I'm very much enjoying driving, particularly on longer journeys. Um, and the range is definitely kind of bumped up now that the weather is getting. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm getting like sort of two about two sixty at the moment. Um, still not probably where it should be. But what I do like about that car is the fact that it, it's you. It's reliable. What it says you're going to get is what you get. Yeah, nice. And then the other thing I've been in spending quite a lot of time in is the X30, which I know we talked about last week. Mm. But I did a really long journey in that. I'm, I'm making a program for ITV about why it is such an expensive and tough time to be a driver, looking at all kinds of things like potholes and insurance and all kinds of stuff that's coming out in a few weeks. And I had to do a really long drive. Um, and it's, do you know what? I do like the EX30. It's a really nice car to drive. Yeah. And on that long journey, I thought it was great. But as we're going to hear later in the post bag, it has got some software issues and there are some teething problems with it. But we will hear more about that a bit later when we get to the post bag. Okay, fair yes, enough. Yes, fair enough. Um, so right, other than Leaf Street, should we what's been what's caught our eyes? What's what have you what do you want to chat about? Uh, I, I mean I have to talk about the Renault Scenic. I, I wasn't <sighs> on the podcast last week and no. I went out to Malaga for the launch of the new Renault Scenic and I am so impressed by that car like yes. so Im- like I can't stop talking about it I've been telling everyone about this car the you video love- is on our channel by it's, the way. it's a really great video if you haven't watched it I, I signed the video off on this particular one and it was sort of a I think it was like a Saturday night it was just yeah. before it lifted and I watched it and I laughed and I loved it and I actually messaged you and said it's such a great video but <laughs> what came across was actually how much you genuinely liked it Gen- 100% genuine. Yeah. Every reaction in there is 100% genuine. Those rear seats, <laughs> the rear seats are set up so perfectly for any passenger, especially kids, because it's got, in the armrest, it opens up and it can hold your iPhone, it can hold an iPad. Yeah. It's absolutely brilliant. You can plug it in to charge everything and to drive. It's really lovely and it's so spacious. I mean, the wheels are all the way out. So yeah. you sit in those rear seats and I was blown away by the amount of space in that thing. I honestly, I think that's that's going to sell like hotcakes. It really is. Wonderful car. I mean, is it going to be like well, when people ask for buying advice? Are you going to just say Renault Scenic to everything? Like Ginny does yeah. for <laughs> yeah. Someone wants Pretty a high performance car. You want an Enyaq, yeah. No, <laughs> or, or, the Renault Scenic has become Nicola's Enyaq. Yes. Yeah, I love it. I, I mean, it, it, this is where I'm really showing my age because there are some videos circulating here on, on YouTube. And if you are listening on your podcast streamer, maybe don't go and check them out, you know. Oh, check them out. Um, of, of me with the very first Renault Scenic. Oh, bloody. I know. I know. Oh, my God. Know. Which was an ugly thing. It was. It was a car only a mother could love. Yeah. I think, and I think we can say that, you know, the scenic has, has, has aged well. Oh, I need to look up that video now. <laughs> That's you a view, see- Ginny, obviously. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Tom. <laughs> That's nice of you. Yeah, I've, I've certainly learnt my lesson on a big fringe and big shoulder pads. You didn't have shoulder pads. I did shoulder oh, pads. Oh, now we have to find the video. And, and I had a big fringe and some <gasps> very bad clothes. Uh, yes, but yeah, that was sort of late 90s. I was going to say, when was that? Late, yeah. Late 90s. Blimey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, there we go. Was shoulder pads even a thing in the late 90s? That's such an 80s thing. Uh, all right, maybe I was just a bit unfashionable. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they're old and it's old, and but it's, it's a great. It is a great car. I think. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to driving. That. It's you're you're going to be so impressed. The head to head gang that we're trying to fix up at the moment is the Peugeot E3008 in the Scenic because yes. we think that's going to be an interesting one, don't we? Uh, a, yeah, because you were French off. You weren't sure about the three thousand eight, were you? I liked a lot of it. Uh, there was. I, I'm not convinced on the efficiency yet on it. They've mm. made some quite big claims about efficiency on that car, and if they can, you know, if they carry through when we drive it here in the UK, yeah. I think it will be brilliant. But it, I'm, you know, it's really hard on a launch. Should we, Tom, why don't we just explain, like, on launches, this is why we hate giving efficiency figures, isn't it? Or even on our mm. reviews here, if we've only got the car for a short time, because mm. it's not true driving conditions, is it? No, so you go on a launch and the, the, the route has been chosen by the manufacturer and it's normally the very smooth roads in Spain or somewhere that's been freshly tarmacked. And um, 
uh, that they'll normally have like a twisty bit of mountain so you can see how the car uh, handles and then they'll have a bit of motorway so you can see how it is on the motorway and those sorts of things but it's not you know, your average journey and also it's normally somewhere sunny because you need to do photos you need to do video so it's no good doing it in fog um so the temperature is not the same so we, we do like to have them for you know a week at least so we can see how it, it yeah. does work in in real life and of course that that also changes between summer and winter so if we mm-hmm. test one yeah. rival in when it's minus two outside and another when it's 20 degrees it's going to be quite a big difference so uh, it's uh, it, it's a tricky one to to know what it's going to be so we, that's why in a lot of our first drive reviews we tend not to dwell too much on efficiency mm. because we know that that's not a true thing and also the other thing we're doing is we're probably not doing the whole driving route no. which will inevitably involve a lot of we're basically spending an hour trying to find somewhere to film that's yeah. quiet that doesn't have angry french truckers driving past or <laughs> yeah. you know <laughs> yeah spanish people on a day out and then we're you know and, and then we when we're doing our driving shots we'll find like some nice quiet shots of road and then we're just driving back and forth quite a lot so it's not necessarily you know they're not they're very much a first impression aren't they so mm. yeah if you ever do wonder why we don't really go big on efficiency claims in our videos in first drive yeah. that is why just that's it. why i do think it's really important if you are specifically looking for a particular car to find a long-term review of that car because that is us genuinely living with the car through yeah. the particular months over winter over summer what it's like on the motorway and all the normal roads and that's where you'll get the definite figures yeah and we've got a section on the website actually with with long-term reviews that we're building all the time yeah but also any of the reviews on the website as well we have and you know spent time with those cars you know mm. once we start to you know get them for longer in the uk you can guarantee that they're you know they we have driven them under a lot of different conditions yeah yeah anyway so that's a bit of behind the scenes of what happens on launches it's not all kind of glamorous i mean it's, i mean it's, 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 it's a bit glamorous. it's quite glamorous we're very lucky yeah um, <laughs> okay so what else should we chat about can um tom what else has been caught, caught your eye in the news this week kind of thing? well it's it's all, all a bit you know ft highbrow but have you seen this stuff about the collaborations between the car companies on electric cars so i think there's a little bit of a panic about the chinese and them being super efficient mm-hmm. in, in terms of cost so uh, Honda and Nissan, who are you know, deadly rivals, I suppose, for years, and Volkswagen and Renault, again, their rivals, are saying perhaps we should kind of join together and, uh, and work together on these um, electric cars and the autonomous driving cars uh, to save some costs yeah. and, uh, and stay competitive, I suppose. Uh, which I think is a good thing, really. I mean, you look at like vans, where they've all got the same badge and they're the same van, but uh, sorry, they've got different badges, but they're the same van. And they do that to save costs, and it's a bit bland, but it means you get a better van, I suppose. We know there is a huge amount of um, disquiet about the Chinese uh, manufacturers that are entering the market here in the UK and in Europe, and it has certainly ruffled quite a few feathers. And I think, you know, what they've done, which is really pretty smart, you know, over the last 25 years, they've gone from being a nation that was known really for its, you know, its cyclists. It was mm-hmm. then it was a country of bikes and now it is very much a country of electric cars. I mean, they've invested heavily, but they've not just inve- invested into, of course, car building, they're building the batteries, they're building the motors, they control the components that go in and all that helps keep their costs down. So it's a smart move, isn't it? And I guess it's the only way, you know, that they'll, you know, they'll be able to survive. I think, Tom, we talk a lot, don't we, about there'll be a, co- a Kodak of the car industry, mm. undoubtedly. Mm. You know, Kodak didn't switch to digital quick enough and it went by the wayside. Yeah. And there will be one of the big car brands that, you know, who, who knows who it will be, I think we've probably all got ideas, that, that may not last the distance when it comes to electrification because they're just not adapted quick enough. Yeah, my, I'd say my worry is that you're going to end up with just very, very similar cars. I mean, we get that quite a lot with like Stellantis models that are all very similar on the inside. Like I'm looking yeah. at the Jeep Avenger versus the Fiat 600E yeah. that is just a carbon copy of each other. So we like a bit of variety. So hopefully... Yes, they can join forces in terms of batteries and that yeah. kind of thing, but they still keep their own separate designs. It's a really good point. And I think um, I remember when we first drove the um, the Taycan, um, the Porsche Taycan and the Audi uh, GT, the e-tron GT. And actually, they are basically the same car. And I think, Tom, you and I both commented on the fact that they've got very different 
personalities they feel differently yeah. they're basically the same components mm. but they do have different driving characteristics those two don't they yeah absolutely I, I think there are other examples i think the stellantis thing if you look at peugeot and Vauxhall, people might go oh, i don't don't really mind which one i have maybe you prefer the interior of one over another but if you look what they've done with citroen that is very different uh, and the mm-hmm. same components but they have made those cars have some sort of personality. So I hope they manage to do the same. And there's brands like Alfa Romeo, and you really hope they can do something with that, where it's, you know, the, the Alfa Milano, is it going to be different enough to a 600E or a, an Avenger? And hopefully they can, you know, with in terms of style and then the way it, it drives, I suppose. And it's something I'm really aware of. So one of the videos of mine that's just dropped was the um, the Neuer Class X, yes. which is, is basically what the next iX3 mm. will be. And and what BMW are doing is developing everything internally now. So, you know, they've got their own motors. They've got that they're, they're basically bringing the hardware and the software together, developing all that themselves. And they've got this quite cringy thing called the Heart of Joy. We, I know it's nasty, isn't it? I don't, don't, like, that. I don't <laughs> like it at all, actually. But the heart of joy is basically this kind of supercomputer brain that processes everything really quickly, and it's going. And it's that very reason they want to be able to keep that distinctive BMW driving style in mm. its electric cars. So it's going to be interesting because this is now it's it's software, isn't it? It's that's how they're doing it. These are software tweaks. Yeah. You know, really, mm. you know, driving dynamics have changed so much. Well, if if we talk about using the same components and getting a different result if i say bmw ix2 i know you'll pull a face jenny whereas (laughs) you say mini countryman and you pull a different face and they're the same components if you are not watching on youtube i i pulled a slightly miserable face for ix2 and a happy face for countryman and you are very right tom they are the same components and it is at a I'm, i'm at a loss to understand how they produce such different results because the Countryman is just a joy to drive the new Mini Countryman mm. and the iX2 isn't much of a joy. <laughs> Definitely not with a heart of joy, that's oh, for sure. Oh, no. Do you like the heart of I joy? I really don't like the no, heart of joy. Really like thing really thing <laughs> anyway, here we go. Um, you? What's caught your eye this week? Oh, gosh, I think I've talked about all my Did stuff. You? What's caught my Oh, I know, I know. I don't know if anyone listening to the podcast um, who is a regular listener is aware that I do quite like the Skoda Enyaq. Oh. <laughs> Honestly, if anybody says to me, well, what, car, what electric car should I buy? Skoda Renia. Get a Renault Scenic. That's Skoda Renia. Should do. Um, I just love that car. So Tom's much. like, get a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Skoda are following it up with uh, another car, smaller car called the, well, I thought it was the Epic because I was being high, you know, and Tom's like, no, it's just called the Epic. Oh, <laughs> Epic sounds fancy. Though. Sounds fancy, but actually, Epic. It's going to be Epic. Nice. Epic. Yes. Love it. <laughs> um, it's going to be everything we want to see and more. Uh, smaller car, smaller battery. Mm. Twenty-two thousand pounds. Nice. Um, yeah, nice. It's going to. It's going to come out next year. It's smaller than the um, smallest um, SUV in their range at the moment, which is the Croc. Yeah. And a bit more like sort of you go to Yeti sized. Um, it's got all this new design language, which has another kind of designery name, modern solid design or something. It's nothing to me. It looks good though. Um, and that makes me really happy because I do think hmm. Skoda's form so far with electric cars has been excellent. Yes. And I really look forward to seeing that and driving yeah. that and sitting in that. Yeah, me too. And and also For the price as well. It's the price. That's yeah. it. You know, if we looked on this time last year, we, we were we were mm. angry people, weren't we, at electrify.com. Mm. We were like, there's only three cars on sale under thirty thousand pounds. It's not good enough. <gasps> they are starting to come though, aren't they now? The more affordable models. Yeah. And I think the good thing about that Skoda is it's a it's a box. It's like that Yeti. And the Yeti's got a bit of a cult following with people who like no, that kind of practicality and don't want a big SUV yeah. and but they like having the folding seats and things. So yeah, it's that big practical box, isn't it? You can put a dog in the back, you can put the kids in there, push chairs, whatever. It it looks I think it's gonna be great. Really good that car. Dog friendly car. Check. Mm. Mm. <laughs> 
Okie doke. Shall we um shall we move on to some um carbine conundrums? Yes, go on. We then. don't have postman Mike this week because postman Mike is off on on a on a jolly. Oh lovely. He's gone, he's gone off delivering his, his post bag somewhere else in another part of Europe. Oh yeah. Oh, it's nice, it's nice, nice. Yeah. Um okay, so we've had some uh, good carbine conundrums. Um, do you want to do that one from Michael, oh, okay. Michael S? Michael S says, I want to go electric, but I need to take into account a very strange, uh, very, not strange, a very special <laughs> passenger, a 47 kilogram large chocolate Labrador named Bryn. Oh. So far, he doesn't like traveling by car and I would like to be able to take him on to more places. I need a low boot lip and boot height. I have been thinking of the Skoda Enyaq, <laughs> <laughs> but is there anything else that you would recommend? Is there anything due to be released that I should consider? The Enyaq is a bit of a financial stretch, so particularly any cheaper options. I would also want at least 180 miles real world range. Okay. Um, well, obviously, I was, bit, I was, I was bit, just... Go on, sorry. I was, a bit, I was a bit distracted there by the sort of the, the words 47 kilograms and chocolate, but then he said Labrador, which... <laughs> No, oh, yeah, but never quite so exciting. Um, and I'm going to direct you to a very handy buying guide that we have on our YouTube channel and over at electrifying.com, which is indeed called The Best Electric Cars for Dogs, funnily enough. Hooray! I will also say Skoda Enyaq because it's the answer to all my car buying <laughs> conundrums. And I will hand over to Tom. Um, what else was on that list? I'm, I, I seem to remember MG were fairly featured. Yeah, fairly so the, the M, MG5, I mean, it's great value. It's got a long range and it's an estate. So it was, a the, other than a, a Porsche Taycan, was the, the first electric estate and it's got a big boot. So hopefully that will take 47 kilograms of chocolate Labrador without too oh, much. Oh, definitely would. It definitely would. It's a big old boot. It's a long boy. It's a long boy. <laughs> 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 I, I think there's also it was quite a while but the video the the, the um, written review on the site has absolutely been updated but we, we've got some there'll be some more interesting cars that we could include in that now I think we should give the lovely Helen who organises all our shoots and basically keeps the whole electrifying show on the road another heart attack Helen's over there and she's like hi no. Helen hi Helen <laughs> hi Helen um, by, by redoing the video I mean that that video was was just like it was an interesting one to make. We had three presenters, lots of cars, and and a number of dogs. So I we think, can't I think, use my dogs. It I would think, be carnage. I think we we should update that. So okay, okay. Big dog day. Big dog day. A big dog day. <laughs> but in terms of like ride height, you'd want something lower because he doesn't want it to be too high. Because as the dog gets older, jumping in and out of the car, you'd want to mm. stick for like an MG5. That oh, kind of height, you wouldn't yeah. want to go too high. There are there are a couple of the van derived ones as well, like um, the sort of Citroen Berlingo, that type of thing. Yeah, the, Berlingo was uh, on that the, list, wasn't it? The Rifter. The, they're good value, very low height for them to jump up into. But I'm not yeah. sure about the range. I'm not sure whether it would do more than 150 miles in the real world with uh, it. If you're if you're not in a hurry, um, my class, oh. and you can wait until the end, towards the end of the year, there is this thing called the Z mandate that came into force on the 1st of January. So car makers have to sell now a certain percentage of the cars they sell in the UK have to be electric. And we are, it is set at 22% this year. Mm -hmm. And we are predicting that as you get into sort of September, the autumn, the winter, you are going to start seeing some really good deals on electric cars. We might be proved wrong, but Tom, I think that's what we, you know, we're feeling generally, isn't it? That there will be this kind of battle for people, you know, they'll realise they're not, they're off their mm -hmm. target. You'll start to see some good deals coming around. Yeah. I mean, there are already great deals, but I think by the end of the year, it's going to get carnage. Okie doke. Um, so I'm going to go, um, I'm, uh, uh, I'll do the next one. This is from Ian, Ian Phelps. Ian. Hello, Ian. Hi, Ian. Um, and, and of course, please, if you do have any car buying conundrums or questions, you can email us, which is info at electrifying.com, or you can put them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so Ian has said, I'm in the process of getting a company car. Very Ooh, nice. Exciting. Been through the list of cars available in the scheme and settled on a Cupra Born V2. Lovely choice. Lovely choice. In no small part, influenced by Tom's review, the question is what options to spec in general. Are there options, so not necessarily Cupra specific, are there options the team could not do without and which ones are a waste of time? So uh, just to let us know, 
um, Ian has spec'd his Cooper Vaughan with a heat pump and extra parking cameras. Yeah, heat pump is 100% important for me. For me, it's um, too. Because it really affects your range, uh, especially so I drive quite, especially when we film here, I drive quite a long way. So anything that would affect my range in wintertime, heat pump is yeah. very, very important. Parking cameras, I'm not so bothered by. I'm not so bothered by parking cameras. I quite like mirrors. I'm a bit old school, yeah, really. I'm um, the same. I do, actually, that the, the rear one is quite handy, just so you know, just, you know. Yeah, but you can go with the beeps. Yeah, that's what I mean. The, oh, yeah, yeah, the beeps. Yeah, you don't need to go beeps. That's true. Yeah, yeah the beeps. Just sensors. Um, for me, what was I going to add? Oh, he, right. If if by any weird fluke um, it's not included, I would always have heated seats and a heated steering wheel. Yes. Because in winter, that is generally what I do. If I'm in the car on my own, I'll just heat the seat and the steering wheel and won't bother having the heating on. Mm -hmm. And that helps me get more out the range. I don't know, Tom. But well, there was some car that I was looking at the other day when I was editing a review of it, and the heated steering wheel was only on the top version. I wish I could remember what it was, but I thought, you tight gits. Oh, we can talk about this now, can't we? It's the forthcoming E5008. That video, has that video gone live? Yes. Yes, it, yes, has. it has. It yeah. has. Yeah. Why is that not standard? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That should be standard. In, in most EVs, I yeah. mean, especially looking at like Chinese, yeah. Korean brands, they are standard. Yeah, I I like, there's a feature in, oh yeah, I'm trying to think what else that's not standard that is really good. Um, I mean, vehicle to vehicle to load. I don't ever use it. But is it you, do you use it much? No. I never. But I, think, I think for me, mm. anything that helps me get more out of the battery in terms of efficiency, mm. unlike you, I'm not actually that fussed about cameras. Uh, wireless CarPlay, I find very important now. I find it very annoying when I have to plug my phone in all the time. So wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, I think is is quite important. Don't go in the EX30 anytime soon. No, doesn't no. It? no. But, no. It, but in its defence, as somebody who has driven one a lot recently, I quite liked the Google mapping. I was full, you know, I'm an Apple girl. Mm. But honestly, the voice activation went really well. I could tell it, it you know, told it where it wanted to go and it got me there. I, I did quite like it. It didn't it didn't bother me as much as I thought it would do. But what what bugs me is then I'm now going to have to use the Google Map the Google Map app on my phone all the time. Whereas normally, if I'm at home, I'm looking up where I'm going. I'll quickly look it up on Apple Maps. Yeah. And then I go, oh yeah, I've got to go there. And then I've got to get in the car and put the whole thing on all over again. Okay. That's really annoying. Okay. Um, so, Tom, anything to chuck in that you would not want to do without on your car? Are you with us on the heat pump and the heated steering wheel? Oh, absolutely on that. But there's something that I could do without, which is uh, that automatic parking app. You know, I, you try it once and then you never use it again. But you do, don't you, Ginny? Do you use it on the BMW or not? No. Is it too Honestly, scary? Honestly, I, I, hands up. I mean, I, I think we've had this on a podcast. It terrified my son. It, it freaked him out. He did not like it at all. Poor Zach. He was like, don't do that. I don't like the steering wheel moving. with really? really? I didn't like it at all. And I did use it quite a lot at the beginning just for the novelty. Until you mentioned it then, Tom, I couldn't tell you the last time I used it. I've had the car mm. for about four months now and I probably haven't used it for three and a half of those. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah. So you did it just I to do kind it. of think that if you hold a driving license in the UK, you should be able to reverse park into I mean, a parking It's day. literally part of your test. But, you know, anyway, that's just <laughs> me. Um, right, let's get another question in because we're running out of time. Kilowatt half hour. I need help. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> Shall we make a cup of tea at this point? Oh, dear. So, so, right. um, so this is from Ricardo. Hello, Ricardo. Hi. Um, so I am looking for an EV that is primarily a runaround second car, but that can do 150 miles plus and can charge faster than 50 kilowatts as I regularly have to do site visits across the country for work. So we'll make use of the ultra rapid charging network. Are there any other good deals to be had on second-hand cars or electric cars around? Or should I be thinking about a new one from the Chinese brands, BYD, Aura, etc.? Um, budget is up to £250 a month, and we can put a few grand down on deposit. Good point here. I feel like buying a pre-loved car is best for the environment, which, yeah, which like it is. Yeah. And then I can run it into the ground over the next decade. But I also worry that I may not understand the car market as I've never had to buy a new one before, living in London and company cars mean that I haven't needed to. Questions include, will Chinese cars be difficult to insure and to get serviced? Shouldn't Any help? Be. Much appreciated. Help for Ricardo, Tom. What have you got for him? Well, there's, there's quite a lot to get your teeth into there, isn't it? I mean, first of all, yeah. I would say if uh, if I didn't have to buy a car on finance or on the manufacturer's finance because it was through a company or something, then absolutely go for a used model because we, we've just I've just done an article about um, uh, buying a used mocker and there are 
200 cars that are yes, less than a year old, and the savings on them are enormous, like 10, 15,000 pounds, um, to the extent that if you took out a bank loan rather than the manufacturer's PCP, you get to keep the car at the end and you save five grand. I mean, it's nuts, the, the, the deals that are out there. So have a look. There is actually, on... Yeah, there'll be a video coming to our YouTube channel. Uh, depending on when you're listening to this, it might already be there, but there will be a video explaining how all that works. So, mm. Ricardo, it might be worth you checking yeah. that out as well. But there's also an article on the website, isn't there? Yeah, so th th those deals are nuts, and, and you can save an absolute fortune by doing it that way if you like. If you do want to go new, again, there are some amazing deals out there. You just have to look around. So, for example, I mean, they're, they're not cars that we've recommended in the past generally, but the Honda ENY1. Um, currently, two hundred and forty nine pound down, two hundred and forty nine pound a month over <laughs> two years, um, and you get uh, free servicing and everything else as well. So, I mean, it, it, suddenly that car makes a lot more sense because it's cheaper than you know a, a Corsa or something. Yeah, um, see, that's what makes it more interesting because I remember when I first reviewed that car and they started quoting pricing, and I went, "No, you no, you don't want this car for that I, price." I remember but you putting, that price putting it on the group WhatsApp from the press. Launch, yeah, you know, we were all like laugh emojis, weren't we? <laughs> but th that price, that's really decent, especially for the same money mm. down as to what you're doing per month. That's that's mm. really impressive. So definitely have have a look at that. Um, the Chinese in the Chinese car insured and service question that is a bit of an issue at the moment, isn't it? But you know, with with parts yeah. and supply, but you'd because like I, to think I, that that's not going to be permanent. Yeah, I, I think the dealer networks are obviously growing all the time. But um, again, when we were looking at the deals, and there was that one on the Aura Zero Three, and I thought, well, you know, that's that's cheap enough, uh, one hundred and sixty quid a month or something, with with a very small deposit for me to actually think, well, I'll go and look at one but my nearest dealer was in birmingham or something it's an hour and a half drive now hopefully you only need to go to the dealer when you first get the car and then once every two years for servicing so perhaps it's too much but you're, you do think you know if i need to replace something or there's an issue am i really going to drive that far so that is a problem yeah. i know also the insurance companies are finding it difficult to keep up with all these new models and all these new brands which are coming so uh, that will narrow down your insurance options. But it, they, they get there eventually, I hope. I feel like we maybe haven't done Ricardo justice with many choices, so perhaps we might revisit that one next week as well. Yeah. And if you do have any car buying conundrums, um, please do. As I said, you can drop us an email, info at electrifying.com or in the comments below. Some general comments, just because we, oh, yeah, we, we've already crashed the killer what half hour, but we'll be quick. Um, I mean, lots of people agreeing with us that the French are winning at EV Live. Yes, they are. Um, uh, Fingalbat. Super excited about Dutch's offering, but as you say, Renault are smashing it. Loved Nicholas Scenic Review. Thanks, yay! So did we. Oh, Madden Stream Railways. Hello. Um, one of these days, Renault will give us give us an electric four. Even in the old days, we only had petrol and diesel. When we only had petrol and diesel, the Renault four was a remarkable little car, and yeah. it is indeed it's coming, coming, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, mm, it's coming. Yeah, we are going to get one. Great. Hurrah! Hurrah! One thing I did hear them say when we were on the launch is that there are no plans for a Grand Scenic. Oh, yeah, because okay. we were talking about seven seats and they were saying, well, there's not really much of a market for seven seats in the UK. And I was sat there thinking, yes, there is. No, okay. There's no plans at the moment for a Grand Scenic. Yeah, but car makers always say that. And yeah. then before you know it, there's one appeared. Yeah. Um, I'm going to now just finish off with some um, thoughts on the EX30 oh, yes. and, its, and its problems. So we were asking if anybody's already taken delivery of them. Yeah. And how are they thinking? Because we've seen some software glitches. Willie Martin completely agrees with me. Taking delivery of an EX30 single motor long range and there are software problems. Mm. When charging, the car resets the maximum current to 6A. I know, which tells you it's like 35 hours to charge a car. Um, so I have to remember to turn it up to 32 um, every time I plug it in at home. Oh, no. That's what happened with me when I had yes. it overnight. And me. I woke up with and you, yeah. Tom. We, we caught both of us out. You shouldn't have to do that. So hopefully that will come. This, no, I didn't notice. The steering wheel heater turns on every time I start the car. 
That's really random. That I didn't... just sounds like a random hiccup in that car. I've well, never seen that before. Well, no, but listen to this. Simon Adams, I took a Volvo EX30 out for a test drive last weekend, wondering if it's the same car you reviewed. Well, it wouldn't have been. They were very early left-hand yeah. drives, so we know there are software issues now. And it was a bit glitchy on the launch, but they were saying these are early prototypes and this will all get fixed, and they haven't obviously quite got there yet. On my car, the radio didn't work. Wow. No, no. I, didn't, I didn't experience that. It took a mechanic to get the bonnet open. Didn't experience that either. And the steering wheel heater wouldn't switch off. What's that about then? I don't know. I don't know. Um, probably it could be horrible in summer. It feels that they are not have, they're having 12 volt battery issues. Robin Helmer had mine for a week, then big failure. Car not charging up the 12 volt battery. Knees replacement unit. It was upsetting to see it taken off on a low loader. Oh, no. I bet it was upsetting. Yeah. And if you look at the EX30 forum, you'll see there are quite a few faults with this car. It definitely ties up with what we've experienced. Now we've had cars here in the UK, doesn't it, Tom? It does. I think on the launch they said, oh, there are some problems, but we'll get them fixed before customers get them. And I don't think they have. I think it's a, it's no. a car that I would, if someone said, should I buy one, I would say, yeah, but wait a year. I, I they think, should have I fixed it all by then. I think I completely agree. I reckon by the end of this year, it will be a, the, the brilliant you know, award-winning car that it currently is. I think in terms of design, I really like it. It drives really well, but there are definitely software nibbles that it needs. Hopefully it can all be done over the air. Otherwise, it's going to be a major hiccup for them, isn't it? Well, they couldn't do it for poor old Robin, could it? So, Robin, um, let us know in, you know, what happens with that and what the outcome is um, with the car. Mm. We have gone over time. We've gone way over time. That's because we're in charge. That's what it is, because I'm here. We're chatting too much. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, everyone. (laughs) I'll leave it to you to wrap up. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. Look, if you have any more questions or anything you would like to talk about, or if there's anything in particular you've seen in one of our videos on the Electrifying YouTube channel that you want to talk about, pop it in the comment section below and we can talk about it on next week's podcast. Or you can drop us an email, info at electrifying.com. But thank you as always for listening from all of us. Bye. Bye. Bye.